السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Now it's time to listen to Dr. Tariq. He will give first his talk, and then the four of us will join again to discuss your questions and your comments about what you have heard about the two the two talks. So, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Salamu alaykum. I'm not going to be too long because I really think that what you heard this morning was uh, Dr. Ghali's presentation on uh, bioethics and, and even the structure of uh, his talk and the questions that are behind are, are very interesting and, <coughs> and could help us in all the fields. Just had this discussion right now, but uh, um, in, in the, the book Radical Reform, the first chapter that I, 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 I focused on medicine and, and, and some of the bioethical questions, I was always also involved at the European level in the committee and, and we had some of the discussions that he was referring to, or at least two of them. I really think that this is a field where with his expertise and the way he is coming back not only him, but the people who are involved in, uh, as practitioners and as scholars, it's very important So to come with... Uh, uh, so this is why I wanted him, and as he, it's the only talk that he is giving, I, I think we have to take advantage of his presence. So you are going to see me too much this week, so he, it will be with, with, with him more. So just what I want to do is a small introduction to some of the questions, and you will see in which way the, it's echoing some of the things that you have heard when it comes to uh, environment. And once again, I think that uh, uh, the way he, he started the discussion is also important to, for us to get a sense of how did it start in the West, all this discussion about environmental issues, because this is a new field, in fact. It's coming with the 20th century, just acknowledging <laughs> that something was, was happening. Why? In fact, by facing potential catastrophes. So the environmental discussion, it's coming because we are now in danger of destroying. So which very important because the way you enter into the ethical discussion is always important to know with which mindset you enter. Is it because of the principles that you are uh, defending or is it because the problems that you are trying to avoid? So the catastrophes, the potential, and it might be, and it is now what we see is that the catastrophes that we have been, we are facing, climate change and, and uh, the way we are dealing with some of the species on, on, on Earth, it's bringing us to the principles of life. So, so in fact, uh, uh, sometimes the, uh, and it comes again to what uh, uh, Shauki was saying yesterday, sometimes the way the perception of the bad could also bring the good in the perception of the principles uh, through our history. So that's a, a, a very important field. It started in the, the, the 50s. More importantly, 60s and 70s, you have voices in the West strong about the fact that water is going to, uh, uh, we, we would be lacking water on Earth. We are destroying the Earth. We are polluting, corrupting. And at the same time, it's coming back to us. The climate change discourse is more recent over the last 30 years that we have voices, and still we have marginal voices saying it's not happening, while now it's almost a scientific fact. Uh, what is important, and you will see that this is something where you can see why we have a problem. The great majority of the people coming from the environmental <coughs> issues and the ecological parties, when they come to this, we're quite quickly connecting the problem that we have with environment and uh, the green uh, question with the economic side of the question and not only the problem that we are not respecting. Understanding that behind the whole thing, environment has to do with economy. It has to do with other powers. It has to do with a way of life. It has to do with a culture of consumption. The consumerist culture has to do with the environment. So they were connecting this. What we had as the first answer coming from the Muslim was just to say, you know, in Islam, we are protecting nature. We, we have the principles. Everything is there. Mm -hmm. So the first attempt was really to take the uh, visible aspect of the environment question, not going to the big picture, which is which fields are connected with this. So I think that this is also something which is important because we see this in many of the fields, many 
scholars, when they try to catch up with the questions that we have in the West, they focus on the questions, say, what Islam is saying about this? While what you have in all the environmental issues and questions was, it's deeper than that. You're not going to solve the environmental issues if you don't speak about economy, if you don't speak about way of life, you don't speak about the big questions. So it came very quickly. So for example, uh, uh, one of the most important, he was a, a leader in this, coming from the, 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 the French uh, uh, society, René Dumont, taking the, uh, uh, a glass of water, saying, look, if we carry on consuming the way we are consuming, our economic system is destroying the world. So there is no question of protecting nature if we don't reassess the whole way of life we have in the West. So challenging the Western civilization in its essence, not only, you know what, it's a catastrophe, try to, to, to protect and that's it, it's going to work. Which, for example, uh, in some of the books that we had, uh, is something which uh, was uh, uh, problematic. Uh, one of the first in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the West who started working about this, it was quite late, Ma'ul Azzeddin, when he, he, he wrote his book about the environmental dimensions <coughs> of Islam, was doing exactly this, coming from the Islamic legal tradition, trying to explain what are the problems and in which way in Islam we have to protect nature, we have to protect species, we have to protect animals, and we have this concern, and to take this with, again, the same notions that we have, which has to do protection of uh, nature, maslaha, and the legal ruling. So, so it's very much about uh, 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 this frame that is the traditional way. One, uh, this was I, I, the book that I, I, I have, it, it was published in 2000, but he started working on this in the, in the 90s already. So you, you, you can see here that you have uh, our attempt of discussing this. Uh, in the terms of what we have now in Western, the, the Western categories. Of course, we had in the Islamic tradition very old concerns saying, you know, in Islam we respect nature and, and species, even in the way we were talking about ethics of war, by the fact that we have to protect nature, this was also something which was there in the Islamic tradition. Pernilla Lewis, I don't know if you heard of her, it's a Swedish uh, uh, scholar now, she's much more concerned with uh, gender issues, much more than, uh, uh, but she came with a very interesting critique of this work <coughs> by saying it might be counterproductive to speak about the environment in this way, not connecting it with the big picture. And I really think that it's very counterproductive. If the Muslims, with our notion, worldview, our conception of life, our conception, our, the conception of God, the conception of the creation, and the conception of the, 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 of the human beings within the creation, if we don't come with this, by challenging the, the, the question about environment, only not by saying, you know what, we have enough to protect nature and things. If we don't come with the big picture and the transdisciplinary approach, we are, it's, it's counterproductive. We are going to do exactly the same as we have in all the discussions in climate change. You have ethical committees, talk about it, tell us what is good to do, we don't care. We are going to do it for, uh, to do whatever we want for profit anyway. So it has no impact, even if all what we are, the signature on the big treaty, it's, it's just to avoid the big catastrophes. But the impact, uh, it's very marginal. Now, what we uh, uh, had, there are two main contributions that I want to highlight here. One who was almost, uh, and that's also coming back to what uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Montaz was saying, uh, even though you may disagree with some of the views of some of the scholars in the way they are looking at things, we need to get <coughs> a sense of their overall contribution. Uh, there is one important contribution here that uh, was completely neglected by many, uh, Said Hussein Nasr. Said Hussein Nasr was neglected for, for uh, decades by the activists. Because for two reasons. He is a philosopher, he's a Sufi, and he's Shiite. So the three of them all together, while for the Sunni tradition it's just forget about it, about him, or about everything. While what very, what very important in his contribution is saying that he was challenging even all the activists, and even somebody like me, 
challenging me by saying, what you want to do with Islam, by trying to reform the Muslim understanding, it's in fact to modernize our way of dealing with the source, and the problem is modernity. So we don't want modernity. Modernity is the problem. So what you are trying to do is, so I disagree with him, but I agree with one thing, which was the way he is saying that in fact, the way we should enter into the discussion about environment has to do with nature and humanity, God and nature, the sacred space. And he's right. I think that this is the critical question which has to do with, we are not going to enter into the discussion. So he started working on this, completely neglected by many. It's only now that you can see him in some uh, Muslim conventions, for example, in the state. But his contribution in this, uh, in Man, Man and Nature, for example, a book that he, he wrote in the 90s, and, and in the beginning of the 90s, one essential book, Man, Man and Nature, the spiritual crisis of, uh, uh, in modern man the spiritual crisis, making it a spiritual dimension and saying that our relationship with the environment, the starting point is the spiritual relationship. If you don't understand that, you have this. Later, you have Malik Badri, he is a, a, a Sudanese a, a scholar. He came to one of our seminars and he wrote something which was very interesting in the light of this, which is on contemplation. And he's coming from a psychologist understanding. So you have the Sufi tradition, you have the psychological understanding of at the end of the day. And this is why, for example, in the three levels that you have about uh, uh, the meaning or the intention and, and uh, the, the objective, uh, the meaning here, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's very important. So, so I didn't know about this uh, structure. But my understanding anyway of when we define the maqasid, it's to start with, with this dimension. What are we talking about? In fact, by questioning your meaning, uh, by questioning the intention that you have in this field, by essence, you have to get the meaning of what you have. So, so the process of the way we have to deal with it is natural. In fact, in anything that has to do with uh, defining your terminology, uh, in moral philosophy, the intention will bring naturally, necessarily, uh, the meaning of things. So, so here, it's really to say, OK, the starting point of this, question, this question is, don't speak about the environment because of the catastrophes. Speak about the environment because of the spiritual principle of your relationship with the Creator. El Khaliq El Khalq. So that's something which is another dimension, uh, which was completely uh, neglected uh, and not enough uh, uh, brought into the discussion when it came to environment. And I think that from an Islamic perspective, there is no way we can speak in about environment without bringing this as the starting point of the discussion. The starting point of the discussion and not the exclusive things. And this is where, so I think that this contribution that we have from some of the scholars connecting the spiritual, the psychological, and the environmental, it's essential in the way we deal with it. And you have, of course, the, the, the book of uh, Dr. Abdel Majid Najjar, who is bringing the whole discussion from a Maqasidi approach by saying we have Abdel, Abdel Majid Najjar. So uh, I think it is it you, you know better than me. Is it two, <coughs> 2006, the book? Yeah. Um, Makassi, yes, but it has another book on environment, only on environment. Yeah, yes, but, but on the, 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 when he was talking about uh, uh, Jadid, Jadida, this 2006. is 2006. And the other one is a later one. It's before. So it's before. When was this one? About 2002. Yes, yeah, so it's after 2000 anyway. So, so uh, this is also a contribution which is to reconsider the maqasid also in the light of the discussion about uh, uh, environment and discussing the whole uh, 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 understanding of the environment in the, base, uh, in the basis of the maqasid. So do we have to have a maqasidi approach in order also uh, uh, to deal with the environment. So on this, he is once again one of those influenced by uh, uh, Tahar ibn Ashur who are not reducing the understanding of the Maqasid on the legal, but on the a wider uh, uh, understanding uh, of what it should be. Now, the question here is once again, uh, that we have this, that we have uh, a discussion about uh, 
al maqasid and the environment by saying what is the ultimate, the higher objective that we need to understand. So on this, once again, you can come with the traditional discourse uh, and add uh, one uh, maqsid to all the maqasid that we have and you say, okay, we go for this and, and it's just we have to, to protect the environment. So we had the five that we are known and, and, uh, and then you add an others and, and this is the discussion that, uh, for example, I was talking about with uh, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Raisuni uh, and others that you have also in the discussion that some were saying we have to add the collective uh, uh, maqasid, the state and things. This is Al, al Qaradari that was talking about this. Uh, my problem is with the maqasid and what is revealed, in fact, even with bioethics, but I would say even and, and even uh, with the environment, is that it's not a question of adding. It's the whole structure, it's the whole setting, it's the vision of Maqasid which is problematic. It's not, oh, you know what, we have five, put one, two, three, four, and that's it. No, it's the whole structure. It's how you deal with the whole structure which is problematic. And in fact, when it comes with uh, what uh, is known in the philosophy, uh, uh, the philosophy of knowledge, uh, what we call the epistemology, if, where, from where do you extract the Maqasid? It's very important, what, and, and with what you are connecting al maqasid with the ethical, the legal, and the philosophy. That's the question. This is where an environment is telling you, tell, tell me where you, Because if you add life, or, or only, for example, if you add uh, environment to Hafz uh, nafs for example, are you going to solve the problem by having a set of, of, of principles like this? It's not going to work. It's, it's the problem is, how we extract. So, so once again, it's for me deeper than only having a critique of Usul al Fiqh or having a critique of it comes from the legal, it's the whole dimension. And what we have when it comes to applied ethics in an environment, we can see the problem. I will explain this right now and just, am I still in my time, uh, boss? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, uh, so for example, if you can, you want to add one by saying there is another uh, objective, and this is in environment. You come to the natural discourse that we have in Islam, and in fact, in Islam, what we have, it's known. ظهر الفساد في البر والبحر بما كسبت أيدي الناس. We have this in the Quran. Men are going to corrupt nature by the way they are going to behave on earth. It's going to be corrupt. So we know this. What we have to do is to come to the principles in the Quran and in the Hadith telling us that we have to protect nature. First, we have to protect life. We have to protect uh, uh, animals. We have to protect. Uh, uh, um, Nature, the way, once again, all this, we have it in the hadith. We have this perception, very deep hadith, when it comes, don't waste water, even if you do your ablution. All this is known. So we have all this hadith. You can add this and say, you know what, in Islam we do this. Are we solving the problem? No, we are just showing that we are not disconnected from concerns about nature and life. That's it. And you add uh, 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 a maqsid, and that's it, and, and, and you, will, you will try to solve the problem. As you see, even in the, 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 the way of the, the, what you call the casuistry at the end, it's very conflicting, it's very difficult to come with this, because it's not as simple as this. Even if you have to, to, to differentiate between life and life. So what are you going to do with uh, animals when it comes to the life of uh, uh, human beings? And, and all these questions where they are uh, uh, practical are much more complicated than this in the way we are to, uh, uh, to deal. So uh, first question that we have based on this, if we're going to go beyond and to try to find solutions today, uh, I would say the Islamic simplistic discourse on in Islam we have enough to protect nature, species and life, I think that this is not going to work if we want to solve the problem. Uh, so it's just to give us uh, 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 an, in, an interesting discourse. Now, the first question is, sh uh, uh, as I said, uh, where do we have to put the question when it comes to the maqasid as to add others or to rethink a, a chart of the maqasid, in which way we are dealing with this, depending on the fields. 
So in the book, uh, Radical Reform, I'm trying to do this, for example, I put life, but not in the, in fact, it's not because I was against, I still think that we can go with the five main principles. But I think when it comes to applying, when it comes to dealing with things, we have to reassess things depending on the field. What I was saying yesterday about the four, you know, the intimate, the individual, the uh, social, the, all this has to be taken into account when it comes to this. And you have, of, of course, to, hide, uh, to add a, a five one, which is men and in, in, in the environment. Even the notion in environment is problematic. When you speak with uh, Asian spirituality, this environment is problematic, it's as if you are the center and you have the environment. Is it the way you have to look at nature itself? So the way we talk is also expressing something in the way. For us, as Muslims, we have a responsibility as being the guardian, the vicegerent here. That's true. We cannot deny this, that we have a status of responsibility uh, within the creation. So how are we going to set this discussion? This is where, uh, uh, for me, it's not enough to add, as I said, the whole structure, the whole uh, extraction process should be reassessed when it comes to uh, 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 environment. Why? Because of what are the fields that we'll find at the end of the spectrum. So why do I think that we have to reassess this? Because of what is coming now. Why? Because I think that everything that we are talking about here, it's uh, if we want to respond to the contemporary challenges, we should understand that even in the field of Maqas, it is transdisciplinary by essence transdisciplinary by essence. You are not going to solve the problem of the environment by dealing with the problem if you don't take the three fields that I mentioned right now. The first one is, uh, when it comes to, uh, to us as believers, is the spiritual dimension, which is connected to the psychological dimension, is the way you treat nature is saying something about your spiritual state. The way you are at peace with yourself should be a way you are at peace with the universe and the environment. And there is something here which is you can't. And, and, and once again, you have it in so many ahadiths. The way you eat says something about the way you are. And why you are fasting? Why the essence? Kutiba alaykum siyam. This is a universal thing. It's the way you are preventing from eating, from having, from your human uh, qualities. Why is this? Is there, there is something here that is connected to the way you treat the environment? I would say yes, of course. I would say yes, of course. Tell me the way you eat. So the whole, why are we facing now this, the, this, the destruction of the environment because of this uh, uh, consumerist culture? Consumerist culture, it's about making money. Eat and buy. What is Islam telling us about this? If we don't talk about this at, at the very essence, at the very beginning, and saying al maqsid here has to do with this. So it's not only defining the meaning, it's what do you want to do with us? And why is saying, for example, it's not only about the way you use, but the way also nature is bringing you to God. These horizons are all of science, so you have to respect the horizons, you have to respect the creation. And all that we had a discussion with Tahir uh, Khalqallah, uh, for example, in, in changing, Tahir uh, Khalqallah uh, is changing the creation and saying it's only the deen and, and when there is maslaha you can go for it and, and it's very problematic in the way we are here using sometimes our interest in the way we change things and think as long as there is some benefit for us. So which type of benefit? The spiritual, the quantitative benefit or the spiritual benefit? Where are we in this? So I think that when we speak about environment we need to have this. And this is why the contribution of some of the philosophers or the Sufi or the people are saying, don't come and tell me just about protecting, it's celebrating. It's not only protecting, it's celebrating. Sabbaha lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al celebrating. Are we protecting or celebrating? Are we bringing to the discussion in the West something which is, it's not ab uh, only about protecting ourselves from catastrophes, it's celebrating gifts. 
celebrating gifts. This was given to us by God. So this is what the indigenous, the First Nations in Canada and the, the, the indigenous in, in the States were saying when the people came and saying, you took the land saying it's yours. We thought it was to, we belong to the lands. We, the lands don't belong to us. This is to reverse the discussion. If you start with this, of course, the, all the question of Makassi is going to be changed. You cannot just come and say, okay, add one. You can't do that. And, 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 and my take is, don't we have a responsibility in the world today to come with another culture, a counterculture? I'm less obsessed with power than counterpower. A spiritual counterpower. And this is something which I think it's essential when it comes to this. So it has to do, and this is why I liked what uh, Badri was saying at the beginning when he was, uh, Malik Badri was saying, it's all about, you know, your way of life. It's about contemplation. It's about the way you are, the, 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 the gifts that you take, and the gifts are not quantitative. Sunset, it's not about, it's not about money. The, the peace, the, this peace that you can get, looking at... Uh, all this, that there are signs that all, this is one thing which is important here. I think that we need to, to get uh, uh, connected to this. Uh, and as I said, you have another side, and that we cannot disconnect all the discussion about the environment without talking about the economic system. So the economic system, and this is why in the book, The Radical Reform, I connected ecology with economy. You can't talk about environmental issues if you don't challenge the economic system. Well, what we see today with uh, some of our brothers and sisters working in Islamic economy, they want to Islamize capitalism, they want to make, uh, to Islamize the means and not to question the, the goals. To, to, and this is for me, it's, it's very dangerous if you Islamize the means just to make them uh, Islamic, and when you are not challenging the goals, which is this uh, economy based on profit, on make, and understanding that this economy based on profit is in fact the reasons why we are destroying the world. This is why we have the environmental issues. It's the, the, the first reason is an economic reason, is a mindset, is just to get more. So to say, okay, you know what, you are going to get exactly the same as you have in the capitalist system, but this is halal profit. The problem is profit. <coughs> the profit, it's the mindset that you have. And you can't talk about environment if you don't speak about this. What is our contribution in this? Give me one book now bringing together the three dimensions, the spiritual, the environmental, and the economic. We don't. So Maqasid here should be the way inductively you understand that it's about, so you, you got my point? From the problems, I come back to the means that we have and say, okay, how do we have to define maqasid in the light of the problem and not the other way around? Not to come with the means and to try to use it as much as we can. No, we look at the problems. In fact, this is very, this, this is sometimes we, we, it could be good to have uh, the corporate culture. Corporate culture is tell me the problem, we'll try to find the means. So it's not. Do you have the means? Whatever the problem, use the means the way you can. And this is what we are doing. So we are using some of our tradition, and you don't take seriously the thing. So I would say here that in, uh, in this, because of the problem that uh, we need to reconcile in all the maqasid that we have, the three dimension of the spiritual, the, the environmental, and the economic, all together. So, so this is why you can't have, so, I, I was saying to Dr. Ghali, what we are producing now and we can produce in bioethics, which is very specific, which is very practical, we can see that you can't talk about bioethics today if you are not connected with economy the same way. Because many of the answers that we had, many of the answers is how much it costs. What is the economic uh, impact of this? So you are going to go to the faster, not because it's ethical, because it's cheaper. So we have this, the man said, you have, you know, doctors telling you, I'm facing ethical problem by the way I got a pressure by saying, don't keep him because it's costs. And, and he's not going to stay, so stop the device 
and, and, and let us go and move. So the economic pressure on medical doctors, and I keep on repeating this, that in my own country in Switzerland, uh, uh, you are not asking the doctors are not the same one going to tell you that uh, your relative is dead and, and we need the, the organs because of conflicts of interest. So these are in things that you can't, you can't just come with simplistic maqasidi thing approach if we don't have a transdisciplinary and connecting all this together. Uh, meaning that, as I said, to add is not, it's not enough. Uh, last thing that I, 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 I wanted to see from here, it's inductively I go back. So from the problems, what are the means? And then from where do we get these principles? From where do we get the sense of uh, how are we going to set the, 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 uh, the objective and the democracy? Yes, the texts are important. Yes, I agree. Nothing is missing in the text as to the great principles, but it's not enough that we need also to get, as you are doing, to take from what is produced by contemporary sciences. This is a human legacy. This is for us. Everything that is produced by the knowledge of all the civilizations is ours. Take it and, and, and get the right questions out of what is done. So this is why we have to do this. And we have to do this in human sciences, as I said, in human sciences. Now we have, you know, the people are telling you in order to cure some of the destabilized reality of your psychology, you are going to nature. Just come back to the cycle of nature. Just know what is sunset, know what is sunrise. Know this. And you remember that the Prophet ﷺ was crying one night because he had the verse coming, inna fi khalqi samawati. Yes, yes, that's the point. So let us come with this, so, so what they are saying, and we bring this into the discussion. We bring the scholars, we bring the psychologists, we bring the, the, the people in this discussion. Because this has to do with the environment. You are not going to respect if you don't get this. Destroying the environment, it's, you know, I read a book in, in French, Michel Serre, a philosopher, he, he wrote a book called Le Contrat Naturel, the, the Natural Contract. It's just, he, he started not, not being a believer, and, and he's a, a, a French philosopher. And looking at the new dimension, now we have to look at not only the interpersonal relationship as to the legal side, we need to have a legal contract with nature. Subhanak. Uh, coming exactly to what we were at the very beginning, that there is a mythak al-asli, there is a contract here that we need to get. So in spiritual term, in uh, uh, environment, and also, uh, so I would say the human sciences, experimental sciences, all what we get, we can get, we need, and this is where you as uh, students, uh, as thinkers, uh, activists, whatever, in the field where you are, the contribution is critical. So it's a, it's a crossing board transdisciplinary contribution that we need. And what also it's important for us, it's to come with a new discourse on this, that the way we deal with God, the way we deal with nature, the way we deal with uh, uh, ourselves, and the way we deal with ethics, it's not an ethics uh, born out of catastrophes. So there is an ecology beyond ecology. It's an ecology based on principles, not based on, on catastrophes. That's very important because the way you look at things is if you put the principles first and say it's beyond the catastrophes. It, it's, it's, it's the way Allah is asking. You, you, you get my, my, what I'm trying to say here. It's what we have today in the West is very much you know, ethics out of potential destruction or how to survive. We are not talking about that. We are talking about uh, dignity and good life before survival. And dignity and good life is, because survival it's, could be very discriminatory. Because the way the West is thinking about its own survival has nothing to do with the catastrophe that you have everywhere in the world. So when you start with the principle of humanity, dignity, and life, it's different from our survival, whatever happens to, and, and, and you know this. You understand, it's, it's the M impact of what I'm saying here. Uh, it's important. So, uh, that's it. So my conclusion here is that uh, um, this relationship between applied ethics in the environment and maqasid has to be studied deeper and we have to produce something on this. And by the way, we have, this is the intuition that we had with the center. We need to have something which is much deeper in the relationship with maqasid in every field, connected with the ethical dimension. So, so 
the intuition of the, the, the center when we started based on the book, and now we are evolving beyond the book even, uh, the, the radical reform was, there is no way we can think about the maqasid without connecting them to ethics. This is one. Uh, there is no way to deal with maqasid if we are just relying on the, the, the traditional discourse of the five main maqasid. It's deeper than that, uh, and we have to reshape, and I still think we have to reshape depending on the fields. But not only depending on the fields, depending on the relationships between the different fields, as I'm just saying, uh, uh, saying this, that I would say that in all the fields, the spiritual dimension is essential. That, for example, in bioethics, I would always start with what is health from an Islamic perspective, and it has a spiritual dimension. <coughs> what is to be in, 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 the, you know, in uh, good health? Uh, a healthy human being. What does it mean? Because we have to define this. And in fact, in some of our discussion, we can feel that we come back to the, the very big question at the beginning. So I think that this relationship, it's, it's essential. Um, we should always try to bring this into the last uh, element of uh, uh, applied realities and practical in a way which we are connecting the, the, the big philosophical question and the practical answers. Why? Because I have a concern, which is what I see today in the West is, uh, and we, are, we might do exactly the same with the maqasid, uh, uh, or to do the same with the ethical concern from an Islamic perspective, is that our discussion could be marginal at the end of the day we are so obsessed with darura, haja, and maslaha that we are going to go for it. And the ethical protection is going to be marginal. I, have, I, I can see this with so many scholars that they are quite quick to, to accept that. Even in, in, for example, in the, the profit that it could have, for example, it's a, if it's good and you assess it's good, in a very specific situation, go for it, but you don't get the big picture. You don't get the, 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 what I, I'm talking about. So, 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 so that could be also a problem, and I think that uh, we should uh, uh, um, uh, be cautious about this. And, and the last thing is, once again, if we do this, if we have this training here, if we have the summer school, it's just not only for all of us just to come with complex, we come out of this with more questions than when you came, that's fine. I hope that you will have more questions when you leave. The question is, how do you, in your field, where you are, understand that you have a responsibility to think about that and to have a contribution? So it's a, it's a training to put some weight on your shoulders and, and understanding that uh, it's not going to be to come from the scholars, it's going to, not going to come from uh, the shuyukh or, or, or and, and, and this, the one thing that was said by Dr. Ghali yesterday is uh, uh, to get some autonomy, intellectual autonomy in what you are producing and to carry on the work. So a good summer school is for us to give you some means and tools for you to be more autonomous, intellectually speaking, but to carry on the work. Thank you.